get on our teaching here, and then we'll we'll be through. Just to let you guys know, Jim and Beverly, we'll be through probably be about three. Okay, so uh, so uh, <laughs> y'all just get take a break and just drink your water, and you know, just wait till about three o'clock, and you'll be back up here. Okay, <laughs> it won't be quite that long. It'll be two thirty, about two thirty. All right, um, you know, uh, Beverly mentioned just a second ago about uh, testimonies. Uh, I just want to share this with you. Uh, we are a community church. We're not just rock and country church. We believe in being the church, which is n- the body of Christ and going out to all over the place. And uh, we share with uh, other churches uh, the gospel, of course, of Jesus and the love of Christ and their love for us, our love for them, etc. cetera. But uh, this coming Sunday, which is going to be the 29th, uh, Don Griffin, from he is the pastor of Hillcrest Church over here in uh, Kemp. His testimony will be on RCC Bible Study TV. Uh, so just uh, tune into that at 9 a.m. next Sunday, and uh, you'll hear Don Griffin. We've already done Paul... Um, uh, Roberts from uh, Hill, um, not Hillcrest, River of Life. Uh, I'm looking to do Donald Kyle's here pretty soon, uh, on and on and on. So, again, this church is not for just rock and country here. It's not just for this building. It's not. It's for our community. It's for actually the whole world. And just like uh, Beverly and uh, and Jim go out into all the nations, as it tells us over in Matthew 28, uh, we're to do the exact same thing. Okay, now. I'm going to talk to you today about the gospel. And most of us think, oh yeah, well I know the gospel. Jesus died for my sins. He was buried. He rose again. He ascended on the, after three, or I mean uh, rose again after three days. He ascended in heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father. How many of us share that with people? How many of us share the gospel with people? Now, I'm, going to, I'm going to give you a little phrase today that you've probably heard, most, most certainly have, have heard, and a lot of people use that phrase to preach the gospel, if you will. And after we get into it and understand it, I pray you will never use that phrase again. All right, so we're gonna get into that in just a second. Our scripture for the day is Thessalonians 1. Just go to Thessalonians 1, find that. Now, as you know, those of you who come here on a regular basis, as you know, we're going to flip pages all day long, okay? We're going to go back and forth and back and forth, different scriptures. You can write them down, put notes on them if you want to, or if you want to flip back, which I hope you do on some of them or most of them, then I'll be more than happy to wait on you to find that scripture so that you can see what I'm talking about is from the Word of God, because we don't want to share anything with you except the Word of God. Okay, we don't want to share anything else with you. I don't want to tell you, uh, you know, what uh, some uh, astrological smart guy, whatever you want to say, thinks about this world and when it's going to end and this, that, and the other. All I want to share with you is the Word of God, okay? Because the Word of God is truth, truth, and there is life and death in the Word of God, and you possess that life and death. You possess that power. I'm going to show it to you, that it's in Scripture also. You possess the power of life and death. So, let's pray it up, and then we'll get started with our teaching. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, especially for Jim and Beverly. Lord, you have blessed them so much through their ministries and taken them so far, and they're so appreciative of what you have done for them. Not what they've done for you, but what you have done for them. And they continue following you as we're to, to continue following you. Always looking for your ways, your truth, and your life to guide and direct our lives, Lord. Father, I thank you for blessing them, and I thank you for letting them be a blessing to us. But Father, we still give you all the praise and all the glory for all things. Father, open up our hearts, minds, souls, and spirits today so that we may receive your word, your word that you have for us. Let the Holy Spirit speak, not me. Let the Holy Spirit speak through the word of God. Just use me as your tool, as your vessel, Lord, as you see fit, so that you may be glorified in all things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, we're not going to do children's church because we've got a couple of kiddos and they don't, some of them don't want to go back, and uh, number 11 has to stay in here now. We can't allow him to go back. 
Oh, where he, oh, he's back there running the camera anyway. So <laughs> there you go. Well, I don't know about that, brother, but whatever. But anyway, uh, of course, we're not going to we're not going to start in uh, Thessalonians, but I do want you to mark that. Um, and then uh, we will look at many, many other scriptures, not many, you know, about 60 or so. I think he gave me. But last week I used uh, uh, Ezekiel. 36, 24 through 38, where God said that he is actually going to take that heart of stone out of us, take it out of us, and he is going to replace that with a new heart of flesh, a new heart of flesh, a heart that is made by God, made for God, for the service to God, for the glory of God. That's what he's going to do. This is what God does for you. He changes you into a new creation, something that never existed before. And he makes you unto the likeness of his son. Because that is God's desire. It is God's desire for your, for your life to be made in the likeness of his son. We can also look over in John 6 and 40, you don't have to go there, but just note that down. I've shared it with you many times, many times. Everyone that sees, John 6 and 40, it says, everyone that sees the Son and believes, this is paraphrased now, but this is the will of God for your life. This is God's desire for your life. Everyone that sees the Son and believes will have eternal life, and Jesus will raise them up in the last day. This is your salvation. Now, next week, we're going to speak. I'm going to teach specifically, I believe, on salvation. But today, we're going to talk a little bit about how you get to salvation. How you receive your salvation. We call this desire of God, of course, the death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and eternal life of Christ. We call that the gospel. And if we believe in these works of Christ, last week or a week or so ago, we talked about the works of Christ. You are saved by works. We are saved by the works of Christ, not our works, but you are saved by what Christ did. So you are saved by the works of Christ. Nothing to do with you, at least anyone should boast. And if we would believe in these works of Christ and put our faith, our faith, which is our trust and our hope, in all that he is, in all that he is, in all that he has done, then we are promised eternal life. We will be saved. We will be saved. This we call the gospel. Have you heard the saying, and this is the saying I was talking about a minute ago. Have you heard the saying, always preach the gospel? And if necessary, use words. <laughs> Have you heard that? Please don't ever use that. Please don't ever use that. And you're going to see why in just a second. But many people say, always preach the gospel. And if necessary, use words. So what is that talking about? I mean, it's a really, really kind of cool, catchy phrase. All right? It, it really is. But this is a terrible saying, and I pray you will never use it. And if someone does use it, then I pray you will object to it. I know you're saying, well, it sounded pretty good to me. Well, let's see what it is, though, okay? Okay. You say that it's a clever saying. It means, Pastor, it means that, that we're to live our life as, as Christ lived his. We're to be the example of Christ living. How many of us live like Christ lives? Every day. Every day. Not just now on Sunday. Oh, yeah, I'm coming to worship. Not just on Sunday. Not just on Wednesday. Not every once in a while. How many of us live our lives day to day, hour to hour, minute to minute, 
second to second, how many of us live our lives like Christ lived his? Oh, well, you know, God knows that I mess up. Yeah, he does. So is that an excuse not to live your life like Christ did? No, it's not an excuse. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's not an excuse. You can't say, oh, I didn't know. Oh, well, I'm not perfect like Christ is perfect. See, there's the key. Christ is perfect. And if you're going to rely on living your life and showing other people your life as Christ lived his, then guess what? You better be perfect. Because Christ is perfect. But we're not. So you have no excuse. You have no excuse whatsoever to say, I'm going to live the gospel through my life. Now you might say, I'm going to do the best I can. I'm going to try like all get out. But I cannot live my life as Christ lived his because I'm not perfect. And I know that. I know I'm not perfect and I won't be perfect until he makes me perfect. And I'm afraid, and I actually hope that that's a long, long time from now. And the reason I hope it's a long, long time from now is because in my heart, I have a lot that I want to do for God. But if God takes me this very moment, if he takes me this very moment, I know that I'm gone, as you said. I'm gone. Call me gone. But until then, until then, I am called to herald, Paul says, or preach or share, or whatever you want to call it, the gospel of my Savior, Jesus Christ. Not through my works, but through my words. Amen. Through my words. You see, that little phrase, if necessary, use words. That little phrase gets us off the hook of not speaking the gospel. It gets us off the hook. Oh, I don't have to speak the gospel. I'll just live it. You can't. You cannot live it. Because you ain't perfect, friend. You're good. I hope after the last couple of Sundays, everybody feels a little bit better about themselves. I know I might have made you feel pretty bad about yourself a couple of weeks ago. But I hope you feel good about yourself because God still loves you in spite of you. But you cannot be a heralder, if you will, of the gospel unless you speak the gospel. You have to speak, friends. You've got to open up your mouth. You're not going to live it perfectly, but why not try to say it as perfectly as possible? Okay, because that's what we're called to do. Over in Matthew 28, I use that, don't go there. That wasn't in my text today or in my notes today. But over Matthew 28, it says, go out into all the nations teaching. How do you teach? You teach by teaching, right? Same way that I do, try to do here every Sunday. I try to teach the word of God. I don't want to preach to you. You already know how bad you are. I hope, I think. But let me tell you how great God is. The example that we try to portray is our sinful selves being regenerated each and every day. Why? How? Because we hear the word of God. See, we're exposed to God through his word. And so each and every day we try to improve ourselves because we found something new. Somebody shared something with us that we didn't hear before. Somebody did something that we didn't know anything about and said, hey, look, this is in the Word. Amen. This saying is an excuse to not preach Christ. It's an excuse. And, and the gospel is the good news. So what you're doing is, is you are belittling, if you will, the good news of Christ. Because you're scared to speak his word. 
oh, but people may think I don't know what I'm talking about. You probably don't. <laughs> you probably don't. How many of us know everything? We're not perfect, right? But what little bit we know, and I'm going to share with you a scripture here after a while. I'm going to share, you know, probably about 1.30 or so. I'm going to share with you a scripture that you know that you probably very seldom share with anyone else. I'm getting ahead of myself. I got I to gotta slow down. <laughs> slow down and share the word as he gave it to me, okay? The gospel is not something that we do. It is something that we speak. It is not something that we do. It is something that we speak. It is the words we proclaim. It is the message to be spread by speaking to one another. It is God's message. God speaks to us through the word. We want to speak to each other like, yeah, just look at my life and see how you're supposed to live. Wrong. It is a message that we are to speak to our brothers and sisters and even to non-believers. <gasps> yeah, we're to minister to non-believers. How in the world did you become a believer? You heard the word of God. Somebody spoke it to you. That's how you heard it. That's how you came to your salvation is somebody shared the word of God to you. Oh, I had a revelation. That revelation was Jim and Beverly Poole speaking to you through their ministry. It was a minister on TV speaking to you, which is really the Holy Spirit, using the tools that God uses in order to bring forth his message. The gospel is not something we do. It is a message of God that we speak. We must speak it. How often have we shown in our actions how not to live as Christ lived? How often have we shown other people, because uh, they look at us. And that's the reason, uh, one of the reasons that a lot of people say, well, I don't want to go to church. There's a bunch of sinners and hypocrites there. Yeah, there's a bunch of sinners here. But the difference is we're sinners forgiven by grace. See, the love that God has for us in spite of us. So, yeah, we're not perfect. Oh, well, wait a minute. I don't feel good about myself now because I'm not perfect. Well, you know what? Actually, it's not even about you. It is about Christ in you. Remember, we talked about that scripture over and over and over. I shared with you all so, so, so many scriptures. And I left one little thing out, which was in Christ, in Christ. It is not about you, but it is about Christ in you. Well, that's how I live my life then. I have Christ in me, and I'm supposed to go out and show the world the Christ that is in me. Yes, you are, but that's not the gospel. Amen. The gospel is you speaking. It is you speaking. And I'm going to give you the gospel today. Several times, actually. And then you take it and run with it. Let's go to Romans 10. Romans 10. Romans 10, verse 17. Romans 10, 17. I hear a few pages, so I'm going to wait just a second. Romans 10 and 17. So then, faith comes by what? What does it say? Hearing. Hearing. If nobody speaks, what are you going to hear? Nothing. Nothing. So your faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So you got to hear it. You got to hear the message. Now hold that place. Because yes, we're coming back to it. Because there's much more scripture there that we need to look at. But for right now, let's go over to Ephesians 2. Hold that place in Romans. Go to Ephesians 2. I shared with, the, uh, with you last week this scripture, and I think the week before. I mean, if you took the, the, the book of Ephesians is six chapters. 
six chapters. And I guarantee you, if God so desired, I could teach on six chapters of the Bible for two or three years or four years. There is so much in the book of Ephesians. Just to give you a simple, simple uh, uh, scenario of the book of Ephesians, the first three, cha three chapters of Ephesians is about our doctrine. As believers in Jesus Christ, it's about our doctrine. The last three, four, five, and six chapters of Ephesians is about how we live out that doctrine. It is a powerful, powerful book. It's a very short version, but a very detailed version of the book of Romans. The book of Romans is 16 chapters, a powerful book, which we are teaching on Wednesday night right now. And yes, we get two or three verses done a night because there's so much information in there on our doctrine, what we truly believe. And I'm not talking about a man's written doctrine, okay, which gave us uh, different denominations. I'm talking about God's doctrine, God's doctrine. And then how we live out that doctrine. The book of Romans is a fascinating book. And if anybody is a new Christian, if you will, I highly suggest you read Ephesians first. And then you go to the book of Romans. And you don't read it. You study the book of Romans. And get the complete message out of the book of Romans. Two powerful books to explain the who, what, when, where, and how you are a Christian. Powerful books. But in Ephesians 2, starting at verse 4, it says, but God. Remember that last week? But God. I love it when it says, but God, because I, I look at my life and I say, God, what a wretched man I am. But God. But God. Who is rich in mercy. Who is rich in mercy. That means he's got enough for me. He's got enough for you. He's got enough maybe even for Johnny. I don't know. That might take a little bit more. But no, he's got enough for Johnny. He's got enough for every one of us. He's got enough for the whole wide world. He is rich in mercy. Because, okay, here we go. Look at this. Because of his great love. Not your great love. Not your mediocre love. Not your simple love. Because of his great love. With which he loved who? Us. It doesn't say that if which we loved him. It says that he loved us. He loves us. Even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive in Christ. We, we went over all this last week, so I'm not going to go over that. But uh, you can go back and look on our uh, archives and you can look at last week's teaching. You can get all this in-depth information here. By grace, you have been saved. By grace. What is grace? That is God's love. That is God's undeserving love poured out on us. Why? Because he loves us. Not because we love him, but because he loves us. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. By grace you have been saved through faith. By God's love you have been saved because you believe in Jesus Christ. And that not of yours, it is a gift of God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. It ain't nothing you do. It ain't you. It is God's love for you. That's the reason he wants you saved. What? That's the reason he wants me saved? You mean he just didn't already give me that gift? There's a little bit of something you got to do. There's a little bit of something you got. It ain't hard. It ain't difficult. Not going to cost you anything. Okay? Maybe a little time. Maybe as Jim was saying earlier, a few tears. It may cost you a few tears. Because once your heart is humbled to the point to where you realize just how much God loves you, how could you not be thankful? How could you not have remorse? How could you not say, wow, but God, but God. So if we can only be saved through faith by God's grace, God's love, how do we obtain faith? 
Where do we get this faith from? Is there a faith store? I wonder if Walmart carries faith. Maybe it's up to date. Would it be in the automotive section? Maybe the sporting goods section. Maybe you got to go online to get it. Where do you get faith from? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Go back to Romans 10. Go back to Romans 10. Now we're going to go back to verse 8. Not 17, but verse 8. Romans 10 and 8. And we just studied this. Wednesday night, we just went over this. And I'm sitting there Wednesday night thinking, I can't teach this the way I want to teach it because if I do, I'm going to give you Sunday sermon. I believe y'all remember that, right? And I'm sitting there thinking, Lord, give me something else. Give me something else. But we got through it. Starting at verse 8. But what does it say? The word is near you. I mean, you got their Bibles here today. You got your Bibles? Amen. Okay. Pretty near, isn't it? Yeah. Now, that's the physical word. The spiritual word, we're going to see where it is. The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith, which we what? Preach. Which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus... And believe in your heart that God raised him from the... This is a sample of the gospel. This is a small version of the gospel. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Amen. So you got to do a little something. What did it say you got to do there? You must believe in your heart. You must believe in your heart. For with the heart... Paul goes on, Paul's so awesome, he goes on and helps us with it even more. He says, for with your heart one believes into righteousness. That means right standing with God because you believe in Jesus Christ. And with your mouth you confess and your confession is made unto your salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Gentile. Let's bring that to today's time, if you will. There's no difference between or distinction between me and Johnny. Maybe a little bit, but not in God's eyes. There's no distinction between me and Terry. There's no difference between me and number 11 back there. God is not a partner of men. He will love you and does love you just as much as he loves me, and he'll love me as much as he loves you. See, it ain't about you. It's about him. It's about him. There is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich, is rich. That means he's got it all, everything we need. He is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on his name shall be saved. How then, here we go. Highlight this, mark it, circle it. Uh, underline it, whatever you want to do. Put stars behind it. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? How are you going to believe in something that you have not heard? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Oh, well, that lets me off the hook because I ain't no preacher. You're called to be a minister of the word. You're called to be a minister of the word. You don't get a free ticket out. It don't work that way. And how shall they preach unless they are sent? For it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings and good things, who bring glad tidings and good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, the Lord who is, has believed our report, who has believed our report, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So I say to you, have they not heard? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. We have heard. You would not be here unless somewhere down the line you had heard about Jesus Christ. 
And how do you hear it? Someone has to speak it. Someone has to. So it's not, an, it's not something that we do. It's not an act. It's not something we perform. It's what we say. It's what we speak out of our mouth. It's what we speak. You and I are called to preach the gospel. And, and of course, you're going to say, well, you know, I'm not a preacher. But you're called to minister with just another form of preaching, if you will, which is to share the word of God with somebody else. It's just that simple. We are to speak the gospel. The not only good news of Jesus Christ, but the great news of Jesus Christ. The great news of Jesus Christ. Why? Because first, like I said earlier, who lives the life that Jesus lived? Not me. I wish I could do better, and I do do better each and every day. Don't ask my wife. Ask me, okay? Don't ask her. Just ask me. But I do the best I can each and every day to improve myself, and you should do the same thing. But I still fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3. But it is so important that we share the good news as to what Christ has done in our lives. In, I don't remember when it aired, Chris probably remembers, but in our RCC Bible Study TV, Jim did his testimony a little while back. And you can go in there and you can see Jim's testimony. You better bring a hanky with you. You better bring a, you better be sitting down because you'll be amazed. Go back and listen to his life. He'll tell you. He'll share it with you. And God changed his life. Jim didn't change his life. God changed Jim's life. And he'll do the same thing for you. How? Because Jim heard the word. Because he heard the word. We must share the good news of what Christ has done in our lives. How he has given us the promise of salvation. Which is available to all. Which is available to all. Who will believe. Romans 10, 8 through 13. It is available to anyone and everyone who will believe. That includes you, friend. That includes you. But if we look back at our little saying, preach the gospel always, and if necessary, use, use words, we see that this is no way, no way what we are and should ever do. We don't rely on that excuse of not speaking to our brothers and sisters, of not speaking to someone else. Well, I'm just... I, I don't know what to say. You don't have to worry about it. You let the Holy Spirit tell you what to say. And the Holy Spirit will speak through you. See, whenever you sit there and say, well, I don't know what I can say, then you're relying on your works. Don't rely on your works. Rely on the Holy Spirit that lives inside of you. And he will bring forth the message of God. What? The message of God is going to come through me? Yeah. That is your purpose. That is your purpose. But we must speak. We must speak. Many may say, well, you know, Romans 14 says that, you know, it's a preacher and I'm not a preacher. So that lets me out. This is ultimately an excuse, a simple human excuse not to share Christ. That's all that it is. It's just an excuse. Then don't try to be a preacher if you're not a preacher. What am I supposed to do? Just say what God's done in your life. You, know, you don't have to preach. You don't have to preach the Bible. Matter of fact, if you actually take Scripture and you don't know what you're talking about and you don't know the Scripture and you go to share it with somebody else, you're doing a disservice to the Scriptures because you're incorrect. 
So don't try to quote the Bible. You say, man, I'm telling you, I lived a life that I would never want to return to. You don't have to go into great detail. I lived a life I would never want to return to. And I never thought that I could get out of that life. I never thought I could get out of those habits. I never thought I could recover from that, from that, that downtroddenness and that empty feeling. I never thought that I could ever be loved until God got a hold of me. And then God showed me his love. Amen. See, it's not our love for God. It's his love for us. God showed me his love. And you've heard this from me many times, but I, I, I like saying it, but I don't like saying, saying it. I don't know why God saved me. I wouldn't have saved me. I did some things that, and I'm not going to share them, that's not my point, but I did some things that I should be dead. I deserve to die. Except God's love for me. You see? It's only by his love for me that he saved me. It's only by his love for me that I can do anything for him whatsoever. I will never, in my feeble mind, I'll never measure up to what I think I should be in God's eyes. But when God does look at me, because I have Jesus living in me, he doesn't see Woody, thank God. He sees Christ in me. Because he loves me. And he loves you just as much. Remember whenever we said there's no Jew or Gentile? God loves you just as much as he loves me. He loves me as much as he loves you. So then the question's got to be is, well, how much do I love God? Am I going to serve God because he first loved me? Yet while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Am I going to serve God because he first loved me? Or I'm just going to sit back and wait till I get to heaven. Somebody saved, helped me get saved by, by sharing the word with me. How many people have you missed because you were afraid to speak? You were afraid to open your mouth and speak. That's all you got to do. Please don't try to teach the word or preach the word if you don't know the word. Just tell them what God's done in your life. And what he'll do for you, he'll do for others. Any other. Any other. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Now I have mine marked, so I can get there maybe a little quicker than you, but I'll wait. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, just a few verses. Well, a few chapters. No, just a few verses. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 4. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 4. And we have such trust through Christ toward God. In other words, what Paul is telling the church of Corinth here, he says, look, you have to put your whole trust, your whole trust through Jesus Christ into the Father. Not, oh, well, God, I think I'll take care of this one. You know, you're too busy. Besides, I got it. No. You put your whole trust in him. Let him lead instead of you. Let him lead instead of you. We are called to follow. Verse 5. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God. In other words, our confidence. Our confidence is not in us. We don't step out to preach the gospel. We don't step out to share the gospel because we are so confident at how great of a Christian we are. And if I'm that good, then everybody's got to listen to my message. We step out in the confidence that we have in the Holy Spirit working through us. 
in sharing the word of God. Verse 6, who also made us sufficient as ministers. You see that word? As ministers, you are called to have confidence in the ministry that God has put on your heart to go out and speak and speak, not act, but go out and speak Jesus Christ. Ministers of the new covenant. What is the new covenant? Salvation through faith alone in Jesus Christ. Not of the letter, which is the law, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. But the spirit gives life. Jump over to chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, since we have this ministry, since we have this ministry, you have this ministry, I have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. That means we have confidence in God. Not in ourselves, but we have total confidence in him. He is going to bring to fruition everything that he starts in us. He is going to make it work for the glory of him. He is going to use us, just like he used Pharaoh, just like he used uh, Judas Iscariot. He's going to use us for his glory. No matter how bad we've ever been. No matter how bad you've ever been, God can take your life and turn it completely 180 degrees and get you headed in the right direction no matter where you are. He will always accept you exactly where you are. And if you will submit to him, he will take you as you are, turn you around or however far he needs to turn you and get you headed in the right direction for his glory and his glory alone. Not yours, his glory. Amen. Verse 2, but we have renounced the hidden things of shame. In other words, we, we repent of our sins. We get rid of those sins. We get rid of the things that keep us separated from God's love. Actually, from our love to God. Nothing separates us from his love. It's our love to him. We renounce the hidden things of shame. Not walking in the craftiness of, of handling the word of God deceitfully. In other words, don't do it wrong, all right? But by manifesting of the manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Whenever you go out and share what God has done in your life, remember, God is watching you. God is watching you. Well, what do you mean, Woody? What are you talking about? Well, it's just like this. When God changed my life, I was able to scale tall buildings with a single bound. <laughs> when God changed my life, I became a rich man. Monetarily, I am a poor man. I'm rich in faith. I am rich in spirit, but I'm poor in, in money. Okay, and this is what I'm talking about. Don't go out there telling them a bunch of uh, stuff. Okay, don't feed them a line of stuff. Okay? Give them the truth. Why? Because they'll see right through it. They'll see right through it. Don't go out there trying to, to puff yourself up or puff up uh, anything that you have ever done for God. Go out there and actually tell people where you were. What, this is what Jim's testimony will do. He'll go, he told us, he'll tell you where he was. Not going into great detail. He doesn't need to. You will get the message. And the things that he was going through, 12 years, I think it was, 12 years, things that he was going through in 12 years, for 12 years, you wouldn't want to be there. You wouldn't want to be there. I'll just leave it at that. But God, but God. See, God can take us from the bottom of the bottom of the bottom of the pit and bring us up to his glory. But God, but God. That's what you share with people. You don't share what you've done. You share what God has done. You're not a preacher, most likely. If you are, preach the word of God. I mean, if you have that calling on your life, then by George, do it. Yeah. But if you don't, don't try to do it. Because if you will do what God tells you to do, what he wants you to do, what he has planned for you, you will be very successful at it. If you, if you... Do what you think you should be doing, and it is not blessed by God. You're going to fall on your face. And then you're going to sit there and go, oh, 
I must have been wrong. What happened? God, I knew you wanted me to leap tall buildings in a single bound. And instead, I splattered on the concrete. You do what God calls you to do, not what you think. And if you don't hear from God, what do you do? Wait. He's exactly right. In our men's breakfast this past Saturday morning, we were talking about that. God will teach you patience, trust me. If you will be, if you will be true and diligent... And just wait. He will pour out the blessings in his time on you that he wants for you. You must be obedient and just wait on the Lord. For he is good. Amen. Amen. He is good. But even if our gospel is veiled, that means even if it is hidden from somebody that we're trying to share it with. It is only hidden or it is only veiled to those who are perishing. You see that? Verse 3, there's some people that will not accept the gospel. There's some people that won't. You can tell them till you're blue in the face. You can tell them, you know what? I died and God rose me, brought me back to life. There's some people who, have, who feel as though they did, did do that. Their heart stopped. Look at the uh, Buffalo Bills player. He died. He died. He didn't just have a heart attack and pass out. His heart stopped. Twice they had to start his heart back. He died. But now he lives. And what did you see? What did you see? You saw football players kneeling, the whole team, the whole stadium praying. And you know what I heard after time, after time, after time on the news? We prayed, we prayed, we prayed. How often do you hear that? We prayed, we prayed, we prayed, we prayed. If they would just get the incentive to pray for our country, for our whole country. If they would just get, in, get the incentive to pray for our leaders of our government. If they would just get the incentive to pray for the finances of our country. If they would just get, if we, I'm going to change that. If we would just get the incentive to pray for our family. For our sons, our daughters, our grandkids, brothers and sisters. We're a praying church. We pray constantly. Many, many times because we believe in prayer. But see, most of the time, people don't want to do what God wants them to do. They want to do what they want to do. And so we fall short of the glory of God. Verse 4, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, least the light of the gospel, the light of the gospel, <clears throat> and the glory of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. In other words, if they would just just believe in the gospel just believe in the gospel the light of God will shine upon them God will will reach down and touch their heart put that new heart in them for we do not preach ourselves okay now back up here he was saying that we're ministers right but now he's saying you're preaching for we do not preach ourselves but Christ Jesus our Lord and ourselves as bond servants for Christ's sake for this is God who commanded light to shine out of the darkness, light shining out of your sinful self, who has shown the hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. You're called to share Christ as best you possibly can. Now, people are not going to look at me and say, oh, I see Jesus. Okay, they're not, because I ain't that good. I wish it was. But I will still share with them the Christ that is in me. I will share the Christ that is in me. And they won't see Christ in my face, but they will see the goodness of God working in me. But I have to speak it, see. I have to share it. If I don't share it, what good is it? Jesus says, if you light a lamp and put it under a table, what good is it? 
It's not any good. It doesn't cast light on anything. You're still going to bump into the walls. But if you'll put it up on a table, it'll light the entire room. And it will. It will. Verse 7. But we have a treasure. Ooh, look at this. We have this treasure. We have this treasure. It's not just a thing. It ain't just something. It is a treasure in these earthen vessels. We're an earthen vessel. And it is a treasure that is in us. That the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side yet not crushed. We are perplexed but not in despair. We are persecuted but not forsaken. Struck down but not destroyed. That means the world's going to come against you. The world does not want Christ. Our world, get this now, you might, under, might not believe this, you might, I don't know. But if you look at our world, our world does not, does not want Christ's victory over this world. I mean, it tells us throughout Scripture. Man does not come into the light because at least his, his uh, uh, sins be known. We want it our way. Well, guess what? This is not Burger King. Okay? This is God's kingdom. This is God's kingdom. Verse 10. Always carry, always, always carry about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. Here we go. Here's the gospel again. And that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in your body. Death, burial, and resurrection. For we who live are always delivered into death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our mortal flesh. Christ living through us. That's what we're called to be. Letting Christ live through us. So then, death is working in us, but life in you. Those who believe and those who have received Jesus Christ, there is life in you. Remember I said earlier, and the gospel has the power. We're going to see this, and I'll show it to you. It's in the scripture. It's in Proverbs 18, that there is death and life in the words. There's death and life in the words. Verse 13, and since we have this same spirit of faith, according to what that is written, I believe, and therefore I spoke. There it is right there. I believe, and therefore I speak. Paul says, therefore I spoke, we also believe, and therefore we speak. The gospel is not an act. It's not something you do. It is something you speak. Knowing that he who raised, here's the gospel again, raised up the Lord Jesus, will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that grace, having been spread through many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Amen. Speak it. Does, I know some people just literally cannot talk, all right? I believe you call that being mute, okay? Is anybody in here mute? Is anybody missing a tongue? All right? Then every one of you can speak, so you have no excuse. There is no excuse, all right? We must speak the good news of the gospel. We must. We have to. Else no one else is going to hear it. Back over to Romans. Romans uh, 1. Back over to our 2 Romans 1. Romans 1. This ought to be where you're at. Romans 1 and 15. Romans 1 and 15. So as much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you. I am ready to preach the gospel to you. And he goes on and says, who are in Rome? All right. Highlight this, underline it, 15 through 17. Verse 16. 
For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God. It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. There, are, there is power in your words. And that power is not of you. It is power of God. To everyone who believes, first to the Jew and then to the Greek or Gentile or us, if you will. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. And it is written, the just shall live by faith. You sharing the gospel is the power of God coming out of you. There's power in your words. Resurrection power in your words. I've already showed you several times where Christ was raised from the dead, right? We're going to see it again in just a second. You may say, well, Woody, I can't remember all these things. I, you know, that's just too much stuff. All this stuff you went through, I can't remember all that stuff. Well, you know what? Neither can I. If somebody were to come to me this afternoon and say, Woody, what did you preach on? I'd simply say, uh, the gospel, speaking out, your, speaking out the gospel. Well, tell me what you said. Uh, 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 um, a bunch of stuff. A bunch of stuff. But it was all important to me because God gave it to me. Amen. And you know what? I can go back and look at it and, and listen to it again. I don't like listening to myself. I hope y'all do, but I don't. I, I, I look at my, I, I watch myself sometimes just try to say, or try to think of, well, where can I improve, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And I think, God, I could have done better. I could have done better. I could have done better. I, I could have done better than that. I could have done better. Oh, why, why did it go that way? Why did I chase that rabbit? But God, see, I just do what God tells me to do, what he puts on my heart to do. That's, that's the only way I know how to do it. It's the only way I want to do it. But we have to understand that if we allow the Holy Spirit to speak through us, it will be perfect for whomever it's intended. It'll be perfect for whoever it's intended. They will get the message because it's directed by God. It's not directed by you and me. So just share the gospel. Share the gospel. But I can't remember all that stuff. You talked about so much stuff and it's, I, don't, I didn't even get all the scriptures down. Well, I'm going to share with you a real easy one here in just a minute. And it's one that you already know. If you truly want to live as close to Christ's life as you can, then do the very thing that he came to do. You can do the very thing that Christ came to do. Look over John, the Gospel of John. Gospel of John, chapter 3, or, yeah, chapter 3, verse 11. Starting at verse 11. Chapter 3, verse 11, the Gospel of John. Most assuredly, I say to you, we speak what we know and testify. There you go. Testifying. Tell them what God has done for you. See, now this is Jesus speaking here. But that's what he's calling us to do, is to share with others what we know. Okay, what we know and testify, what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of God who is in heaven. So only Jesus is the one that came from heaven. Now we have people from time to time says, oh yeah, I went to heaven. Even Paul tells us over in Corinthians, he says, I don't know if it was me in the spirit or really me, but all I know is, is I went to the third heaven and heard things I wasn't supposed to tell. So, you know, I don't know if Paul went to heaven or not. I think in his spirit he probably did, but not in his body. Verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man must be lifted up. Here's the gospel again. And whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Wow. There, there's another short version of the gospel, right? But here's one that you know. How, many, how often do you share this? 
For God so loved you, I like to put that in there, but God so loved the world, but God so loved you, put your name there if you write in your Bible, that he gave his only begotten son, God so loved you, that's God's grace poured out on you, that he gave you his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe, have faith in him, in his son, should not perish, but have everlasting lives, have received salvation. There's the gospel again. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that, through, but that the world through him would be saved. That's what you're called to do. Through Christ living in you, the world shall be saved. How do you do that? You speak. Amen. You just speak. Amen. That's all it is. You don't have to preach. You don't have to evangelize. You don't have to jump up and down, run around. You don't have to do anything but speak. How hard is that? And I know some people wouldn't mind speaking a little too much. I know y'all thinking, yeah, you do. You go too long. Because I'm trying to get the message to you that all God is asking you to do is use the gift of the tongue that he has given you. You're not going to go out there and go be healed and be raised from the dead. If you can do that, I want you to go out here to this cemetery and I want you to raise everybody up. More than that, if you can heal by your power, I want you to go to um, uh, Children's Hospital, uh, St. Jude's. I want you to go to St. Jude's, all right? My heart is it bleeds for St. Jude's and also for the uh, uh, Children's Hospital here in Dallas. I want you to go there and I want you to close that place down. Close it down. Every one of those children, I want them healed and walking out of that place and never to return. If you have that power, you go do that. Otherwise, you just speak the gospel. You just share what God has done for you because God does the healing, not us. Well, we don't understand why all those kids and why we have to have those hospitals. Okay, there's evil in the world. If there was not evil in the world, we wouldn't know what good is. There's evil in the world. It is not your power. We prayed for Jim before, he, uh, before we started this morning because he was having back problems. We don't do the healing. We just do the praying. We just stand in faith and believe what God tells us to believe. God does the healing. God does everything. And you are to submit yourself unto him. He is to be the Lord of your life, not you. Not you. You think God's going to follow you? <laughs> Look where you've been. Okay? Your words and mine are spoken by our voice. It was spoken by our voice. Not actions, but empowered by the Spirit of God that lives in you. And that can bring the good news of salvation through Christ and Christ alone. It can bring salvation to someone. It is the power of God unto salvation for those who will believe. But they got to hear the words, right? They got to hear it. Somebody's got to speak it to them. Jesus was raised from the dead. Jesus the man, I hope you, we get this. Jesus the man died. He died. Just like that football player died. Jesus the man died. But God raised him up again. God, and of course he is God, so he, in a sense he raised himself up. Matter of fact, he even says, I not only choose to lay down my life, but I choose to take it up again. But he did it because he believed and he spoke himself back into life, if you will. There's power in the words. Power, power in the words. To a dead soul, not a dead person, to a dead soul, that's someone who doesn't believe in Jesus Christ. To a dead soul, and just as Christ was raised from the dead, that soul can be raised from the dead 
and live eternally with God if somebody would speak to that soul. Amen. Just speak. There's power in the words. Matter of fact, Proverbs 18 and 21 says, there is death and life are in the power of the tongue. That's what God's word says. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of God's tongue. Let's go to our scripture. What? We ain't been in scripture? Well, let's go to our scripture for the day. It's only a couple of books long. 1 Thessalonians 1, starting at verse 2. I love most of Paul's epistles. Matter of fact, I think it's all but one of them. He starts out with thanks be to God, the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. And we need to start the same way. Thanks to God, the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ in all things. Verse 2, we give thanks to God always, always for you, making mention of you and our prayers, remembering without ceasing your word, your work of faith, your work, your work of faith, labor of love and patience in the hope of our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of the God, the, of our God and Father, knowing, beloved brethren, your election by God for our gospel, our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power. There's power in you sharing the gospel. And in the Holy Spirit, in as much assurance as you know what kind of men we were among you for, for your sake. And you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word having received the word, hearing the word, in much affliction with joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you become examples to all in Macedonia and Achaia who believe. Verse 8, look at this now. For from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth. From you the word of the Lord has sounded forth. In other words, somebody speaking the word. Somebody is sharing the word. Somebody is sharing the gospel. Not only in Macedonia, but also but in Achaia. But also in every place, your faith toward God has gone out so that we do not need to say anything. We don't need to say anything because you're doing it. See, I don't need to preach to the whole world. I just need to share with you. You go out and share with the rest of the world. Well, whoever's in your world, all right, your world may be just, you know, five or six people. But have those five or six people heard from you the gospel of Christ? Okay, maybe it's just your family. Has your family heard from you the gospel of Christ? Maybe you have a big company and you have 5,000 employees. Have they heard the gospel of Christ? Not seen you. Most people see good people and they say, oh, he's such a good person. I bet he's a Christian. They need to hear from you that you're a Christian. We have to speak. Don't silence the lamb. There's a movie there. But don't silence the lamb. But you see what I'm saying? Jesus is the lamb of God. Don't silence that lamb. I know we have a light problem here. If somebody's got my ladder, I can't reach it, but I'll take care of it at some point. So just ignore the light, please. For they themselves declare concerning us what manner of entry we had to you and how you turned to God, to God from idols to serve the living and true God. Wow, we're talking conversion here. We're talking regeneration here. We're talking salvation here. Amen. We're talking salvation. And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. What a promise. Do you know what this promise is right here? This promise is, is, that, is that whenever the wrath of God is poured out on sinful earth, which is the coming tribulation period, which is going to happen because God's word is true, all right, it's going to happen, and when it does, guess what? You're not appointed to rest. You ain't going to be here. 
you're going to be taken out. Why? Because of God's love for you. Because of his love for you. You're not going to have to face the wrath. And it's going to be a terrible, terrible time. Jesus even said, it is going to be the worst time that this world has ever seen and ever will see. That's what, it, that's what Jesus said. You don't want to be here for that. You don't have to be here for that. But more than that, more than that, your friends, your neighbors, your enemies, your children, your grandchildren, people you love, people you hate. Hope you don't hate anybody, but, but the people that you might not like quite so much, they don't have to face it either. Jesus said, it is going to be the worst time the world has ever seen or will ever see. That must mean it's a pretty horrible time. You don't have to face that. And neither do others. But guess what? God needs beautiful feet. Well, aren't God's feet beautiful? You are God's feet. You're God's feet. You're God's eyes. You're God's hands. You're God's mind. You're God's heart, and you are God's voice. You're God's voice. Shall we hear the voice of God? It has to be you. It has to be you. Somebody shared it with you at some point. And now, your promise not to face the worst time the world shall ever see. Amen. Why? Because you have been saved by the love of God. Not because you have done anything except believed. See, that's all you got to do. Oh, well, that's too easy. God makes it easy. Amen. But it is what you have to do. Because if you do not believe in the death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and seating at the right hand and interceding for you and me in Jesus Christ, if you do not believe the good news that Jesus came to save and pour out his love through, through the Holy Spirit on each and every one of them, if you don't believe that stuff, it's okay. You don't have to. Nobody's going to make you believe it. But God's word says, God's word says, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but receive eternal life. Now, so what's the opposite of that? What's the opposite of that? Who who does not believe will not receive eternal life. So what do you want? Jesus tells us over in the Old Testament, he says, I give you the choice, choose life or death. Then he says, hey guy, choose life. He even tells us, choose life. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the life. So you have, to, it's, when you continue there in John 14, 6, he says, and no one comes to the Father except through me, through him, through Jesus Christ. So, I mean, it's pretty plain, as plain as the nose on your face. You'd have to get somebody to help you not understand it. I do believe, and if you don't understand it, I'd be happy to, to help you with it even more so. But if you do not receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you ain't going to heaven. Simple as that. You're not going to. Oh, but I'm so good. You ain't good enough. Even Jesus, we shared this a couple of weeks ago. Even Jesus said to the rich young man, he says, you call me good? No one's good but God. No one's good but God. So you're not going to be good enough. Your kids are not going to be good enough. Your grandkids are not going to be good enough. Your friends are not going to be good enough. Your enemies are not going to be good enough. Well, I know that. They may think the same thing about you. None of us are good enough. Paul tells us in Romans 3, there's no one righteous. No, not one. Not one. There's not one of us that naturally seeks after God. So we have to have that change. We have to have that change. And how do we understand? How do we know that change? It's because someone preached to us. 
How is somebody else going to know that change? You got to preach to them. You got to speak it out. You got to open up the lips, bump the gums, and speak it out. Because if you don't, they will not hear. You are the voice of God. Be that voice. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father God, if anybody at all does not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I pray, Lord, I pray, Lord, that today they receive the message of the Word of God. Certainly not of any credit to me. But we give you all the credit, Lord, all the glory, Lord, all the honor, all the praise, Lord, because you use us as that earthen vessel that has the power lying inside of it that we have the ability to bring out if we will just do it. And all we have to do is speak. How simple can that be? Just simply speak. So Father, I ask you today if there's anybody here who has not received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I pray, Lord, the Holy Spirit will touch their hearts Soften their hearts to receive the word of God as it has been spoken today. To let them know the only way to heaven, the only way to heaven is to follow the way which is Jesus Christ. Only through him shall we see eternal life with the Father. And I pray, Lord, if anybody has not received Jesus as Lord and Savior, that today they will submit their body. They will, they will surrender their soul, humble their heart, and receive Jesus as Lord. You simply do it, but meaning it in your heart, you simply do it by just simply saying. It's so very simple. But you must mean it in your heart, for God knows your heart. Dear Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart to be my Lord and Savior. Live in me, Jesus, and live through me so that I may bring others into your kingdom. For I want to hear when I approach the throne of heaven, well done, good and faithful servant. If that's you today and you have not received Jesus, then you can simply say those words, mean it in your heart. And the word of God says, call on the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. You shall be saved, not might be, you will be. And I pray it so in Jesus' name, amen.